But the one on the left, the one I already had pre-plans to have on, because unfortunately, and I got to tell you, that, I got to say this, and I'm just going to say it to his face. I'm going to play the music to have him on. You already know who it is. It's the Thigh Doc. Thigh Doc, look, I'm getting a little sick and tired of seeing you, man. And it's not because I don't love you. It's because I'm sick and tired of talking about the stuff I got to talk to talk about with you. Rather see you in person, to be honest. No kidding. I'd rather have a couple beers and have to have you come on and tell me Ooh. things I want to hear. You know what I mean? Miss getting a leg up with you. Yeah, and I don't want to make you dance because I know you're probably as depressed as I am. But <laughs> the Thigh Doc, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. And like I just said, I'm getting a little sick of having him on. I'm sure you're getting a little sick of seeing him. Not that he's a not a handsome gentleman. It's just because this injury list continues to grow and grow and grow. Thigh Doc, I'm gonna I'm just gonna give you the floor out of the gate here. Where do you want to start? Because I have a feeling that you have a you know you have the world to pick from. What's the one on the top of your mind right now that you want to start yeah. with? Well, let's uh you want to take it with the hide? Let's take it with the hide. So last week we talked about I was a little worried because he had the neck the neck history. Thought it might be more long term than short term. Um, and it looks like it is. So he's probably had some wear and tear in his neck. Um, it looks like he herniated a disc in his neck when he took that hit. Um, like I said, it didn't look like a serious hit. It looked pretty benign, and he was down. He had to go to the hospital. That's not a good sign. Um, so he's going to go and help go ahead and have surgery. Um, so this will knock him out for the year. Now, the gold standard uh, to correct a herniated disc in the neck is a fusion. Uh, so basically, they fuse two of the vertebrae together. The problem is once you do that in contact sports, it – puts a lot of wear and tear at the vertebrae above and below. Um, so the average career length after a fusion in the neck in contact sports is three years. On the, on the other side is he's turning 32 in December. So probably has three years left. So um, if that's the route they're going, uh, you know, I'd expect to see him in the league for another year or two. Um, he might be, a little bit of a ticking time bomb because obviously anything can happen, but um, they generally do do pretty well in the beginning. And then as the, the age out from the, the injury, it does, uh, it does break down. Yeah. And you were spot on with that. I know when I had John last week, I was hoping you were wrong, but when you had said that, you know, those injuries over time, suffering that many of them. And then you had said that, you know, you go get a second opinion. None of it sounded good to me. I got to tell you though, I was not anticipating a year ender. But that just goes yeah. to show you how critical that area of the body is when it comes to suffering that many injuries. Losing him yesterday was just it, not having him out there was it, just so detrimental to this team as a whole. But of course, not having him out there and not having Poyer out there, his partner in crime, just made everything that much more worse. Talk to me about Jordan Poyer, because quite obviously, I think. If he's out there, that waddle play has a much less chance of happening than if he were out there. Talk to me about Jordan Poyer. What can we expect about him moving forward? Yeah, so it's kind of unknown because he, he played the game last week. There's no there's no video evidence of when that injury was. All they're doing is listing it as a foot. Um, so when I hear a foot injury, like, and he was able to practice a little bit. So two things come to my mind with a foot injury. A, stress fracture in the foot, the Sammy Watkins injury. Those don't do well. That's what Mar Marquez Stevenson's got. Mm -hmm. um, and they need, and they need, you know, they need a screw in the foot. If he, if he broke that, he's going to get, he's going to get that taken care of. Um, I doubt he would have like a stress fracture there and they're just going to, you know, play it out because he'd be in a walking boot. Yeah. So what I think happened is he had probably had a mid foot sprain, which isn't ideal. Like that's like a baby Liz Frank. But Allen had one last year, and he was able to play the next week. He suffered it in the Tampa Bay game. Remember, we got, like, awkwardly yes. tackled, getting chased by uh, uh, White. So, you know, he practiced, he didn't practice, and then he went back to limited. Uh, I would assume that he's, like, a day-to-day -day injury, and we should expect him back next week. That's what I would guess. Okay. Well, that's good news. I just think that we yeah. look at the defense and we look at – what the biggest missing piece is as far as what we can get back soon. Obviously Trey white's going to be big, but yeah. getting him back is critical. Getting Dane Jackson back critical too. I know it looked terrible. We got a lot of great news though, after his yeah. injury, based on what we thought it could be. What are your updates right now? on What, uh, what Dane Jackson's currently going through? Yeah. So once they ruled out a fracture and no structural damage, that means he didn't have a herniated disc either. It's kind of just wait until you have, you know, no neurological symptoms, full range and good strength. Mm -hmm. He's He's got to be on a day-to-day -day mend. If there was anything serious, he'd be on the IR already. 
He was already out with a jersey on in practice last week. I can see him coming back this week. I know it's like, wow, that's miraculous for like the hit we saw him take. But that's, yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, guys are younger. They don't have a lot of wear and tear. They could bounce back. So, we'll again, we'll see how the practice report goes. If he's like not practicing early in the week, I don't think that bodes well. But mm-hmm. uh, if he's already if he's limited come Wednesday, like I'd say, you know, he, he might play. All right. Well, that's good news, too. I think if we can get those two guys back, we're already in a much better position than we were yesterday. It'll also yeah. help if we can get Ed Oliver and Jordan Phillips, two of our key guys on the D-line. Uh, what's the story with those two guys as of right now? Yeah, so Ed looked like his trajectory was he was going to play. He, he yeah. was limited all week in practice. He's never got to full, but it looked good like he was he was on his way. I don't know if he had like an extra little sprain on that last practice leading up to the game. Um, now, now he's like posting some videos. He's got his foot in ice. Um, so I don't know if something happened there, but again, he had what looked like a medial ankle sprain based on the, the footage when he stopped and he turned around and his ankle kind of buckled underneath him. Yeah. It's close to a high ankle sprain, but his foot wasn't flexed back far enough for that to occur. And you know, that's what happened to Kumro. So we could talk yeah. about that too, but um, he's got to be on the men unless he had a setback. So I know I was very, very optimistic he was going to come back this week. I would assume he's going to be back for Baltimore. Unless something starts to trickle out, oh, yeah, he did get re-injured in practice leading up to the Miami game. That might set him back another week. But if it was real bad, again, he would have been on the IR because they can come back in three weeks. So I got to assume he's going to be back for Baltimore. Okay. All right. So, so far, so good. Yeah. Jordan Phillips, though. Yes. Big, big man. Definitely looked like he had a big strain. He's out of practice. It's not like these guys are just in the training room. So that means they're starting to come along. But I don't think he's going to be able to come back in two weeks. I think he can get back for the Pittsburgh game week five. But again, watch watch the practice. If he's limited at the start of this week, that's a good sign. If he can get ramp up to full by the end of the week. But again, I don't think Jordan's coming back this week. Okay. Jordan Phillips. Um. Okay. So, so I, I think, though, you know, Jordan Phillips – would be great to have back, but sure if we had, if you can get Ed Oliver back. That would be awesome. Bo, yeah. appreciate you joining in. Enjoy your victory Monday, by the way. All the Dolphins fans out there, including the ones I've talked to, I said, hey, man, enjoy it. 3-0, hey, I got to tell you, it feels a hell of a lot better than 2-1 right now. Die Doc, I got a feeling we might have had a better chance to have that 3-0 feeling if Mitch Morse was in yesterday. What the hell happened there? Yeah. I was not anticipating that. I also wasn't anticipating to – recognize how much of a factor he truly is to this Bills offense in its totality. I mean, you you couldn't look out at that field yesterday and not think he was the biggest missing piece. Yeah, especially with the snaps. Now, not only was there botched snaps, I could count two times early in the game, he almost hit the motion man. I think it was Dawson Knox both times. One time he even had to, like, kick his legs back. Like, he was snapping it as the motion man was coming by. So definitely there was a disconnect with uh, Van Roten, right? Yes. Um, it is what it is. So Morse has an elbow injury. It, it's, it got slightly hyperextended. The only caveat is, is he was a little bit rotated when it happened. So that would stress that Tommy John ligament. I doubt he tore the whole ligament, but he probably has a grade two sprain. Now, elbows, you can be aggressive with because you can get a brace on and you can play if there's good pain tolerance. I think the reason they held him out is because it's a snapping arm. I'm sure it was super sore. Even if braced on, he might not, you know, not might not be strong enough with the grip of the ball. So I think they thought they could give him another week. Um, he's another guy that was limited during yeah. practice all week. So I thought, hey, listen, honestly, elbows, they can come back quick. So I was surprised he didn't play. Um, but I would assume he's coming back this week. He's got to be like a day-to-day thing. Got it. I know this isn't your expertise, but I want to put this to bed because if I got to read one more person blaming the sun and the heat for this loss yesterday, I'm going to discontinue my phone service. I mean, I saw people trying to report this, you know, Miami to to OSHA for a work violation. I mean, I get it. It's hotter (laughs) than hell out there, but the Bills had every opportunity in the book to win this game. I'm not going to blame the sun. What I will say, though, is both the Bills and the Dolphins had guys dropping like flies because of this heat. 
I know it's not your expertise, but you have more of an idea on this than I think I would. What could they have done better throughout the week going into this game, Thigh Doc, to have them more prepared for this heat? Because you had Diggs checking himself out every other play. Knox had to yeah. go get fluid. So did Isaiah McKenzie. What really happened there? Is there anything to mitigate that? So I think like due to the short week, it probably screwed up the, you know, the fluid intakes, you know what I mean? Cause they're already dehydrated from their game Monday. Right. Yeah. You start a Tuesday instead of Monday. It could have made a, a bit of a difference, but at the end of the day, that heat, that humidity, if you're not used to it, you are not, you don't, you've, you have not built up the heat acclimation. You have to be in it. You have to practice in it. You have to play in it for your body to adapt yes. to it. You can get all the fluids you want, but if you're going to go from Buffalo when it's been 60 and cool, and then you go down to humid and a hundred, your body's, your body's going to reject it. Yes. So I think it was just, it was a tough situation coming no, no. off a short week, putting them in the sun. It's humid because the storm was coming in. Don't forget about that. The humidity plays a huge role. It takes the heat index way up. So, you know, they felt it. Um, it sucks. Sucks. But you're right. At the end of the day, we sh still should have had that game, man. And that's we dominated what, them. Exactly. And Ark Oman here saying the heat wasn't an issue. Our whole team was passed out. Of course it was an issue. Oh, my God, yeah, it was an issue. I mean, no doubt. Yeah. Those guys aren't dropping to the ground if there's not heat out there. What I'm saying, it's not the reason the Bills lost. That's what I'm saying. I got right. people – I mean, you know, and I got to give Miami credit. The people saying, like, you're blaming the sun or whatever. Yeah, it, it's a bad look for us. We lost. I understand if you want to blame the injuries and the amount of mistakes the Bills offense made. Yes, the heat was an issue. It's not the reason we lost. I continually see, I continue to see that on offense, and I'm getting a little sick and tired of it. Um, yeah. All right, so, Thigh Doc, tons of injuries yesterday. The Bills go in with six defensive players injured and then Mitch Morris, and then yesterday, yeah. what did they lose? An additional seven, was it? throughout the day a lot happened there but there were five yeah. who didn't return so let's try to summarize as much yeah. as we can what do so you, what forget, you a, for, forget about the heat illness guys they're all yes. coming back that's, exactly. that's like that's a non-issue um the big one is benford so he broke his hand now listen there's like 20 some bones in your hand we don't know exactly which one it is the bad one to break is the scaphoid mm -hmm. um they definitely wouldn't put him back in the game if that's what he broke i'm assuming they were undermanned and they're like hey your fracture is not displaced. You're going to have to get it fixed. But to be honest, can you just put this in a club and go out and play special teams? Because we don't have enough guys. So I think that's what happened there. He went in a club and he, and he played special teams. Okay. He's getting it. He's getting it fixed tomorrow. You know, usually they put a screw in or they put a little plate in. I'm going to assume it's a, a metacarpal fracture. Those, those are the most common. That's the long bones in the hand. That is what Dawson Knox had last year. He was able to come back in three and a half weeks after a surgery and he's a pass catcher. So you could imagine you can expedite that with a, with a DB. He would, he would have to wear a club if he came back real soon, but after about two, two and a half, three weeks, depending on the surgeon, um, he could wear more of a low pro profile brace, kind of like a shield. Okay. He'd probably be under his glove too. Um, so yeah. So what does that mean? He's probably out at least two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Now, in addition to that list, is there anything else that we should be worried about as far as long term? I mean, Kumaro's got a high ankle. Those suck, you know, at the earliest two weeks, but really it's like three to five weeks. Okay. Depends how severe it is. I don't know if he's going to be getting put on the IR or not. That was a bummer because he had a better day yesterday yeah. than I think I could have thought. I mean, he had a couple of great catches. But when, what I'm getting from you, though, is, you know, Knox – McKenzie, th those are guys that, you know, they were just beat and that was a starter. Yeah, that's no big deal. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Gabe Davis did look a little gimpy. Yeah, I saw a comment here earlier. So if yeah. you have anything on that, that'd be interesting because I'm glad he played. We needed him, but he did look like he was limited. He sprained his ankle. The same one he sprained against Pittsburgh last year, week one. Uh, I, I think it affected his early, early year last year. He didn't have like a high snap count to later in the year. But, um, no, he's playing. He's going to be fine, but he's a little limited. So take it for what it is. All right. And he's got he's got a little history on that ankle. So he's probably not going to be the Gabe Davis we saw in week one and week two for maybe even a couple of weeks. But he should be able to stay active. He still played 98 percent snap count. I know so he obviously did. He's, he's good enough to play, um, but you could see it. You could see a little lab. There's a little laboring in his gait, um, but it is what it is. He's going to have to play.
Yeah. And he we're is. just going to retweak it. So we'll see. Uh, you know what, Thy Dog? The problem is, is we avoided the injury bug forever. And this year with the expectations and now, I mean, it just seems like it is piling on and on. But I got to say, you coming on here, you do make me feel better. It looks like we should be yeah. getting some guys back this week. And that's good. Yeah. So. The B- Bates is another one I'm worried about right, for yeah. next week. But, you know, within two weeks, it'll be fine. But I don't know if he's going to be able to clear the concussion protocol for the, the Ravens game, which would suck. Before um, I let you go, this is the talk yeah. of the NFL right now. And I don't think it had any impact on the game whatsoever. But I will say it didn't look good. What we're hearing about the Tua situation is pretty wild. Oh. Now they're blaming it on the yeah. back. He stands up and looks like me walking out of the bar. That didn't look good for anybody, let alone the the NFL and its perception as far as allowing him to go back in there. What is your take on that whole thing? It had to be head, right? Blaming the back just seems a little odd to me. Looks like an alibi. Yeah. Yeah. It's an odd. So what do you what listen, do you make of it? It's odd to me, man. It really they're is. supposed to have a, they're supposed to have an independent, you know, examiner. Yeah. I'm sure he came back too. You know what I mean? Sure. But he definitely looked concussed. He hit the back of his head. That, that's the exact same hit Josh Allen took when he played Cincinnati his rookie year in the preseason. He was getting flushed out, and this is one that scares me because he's always extending plays, mm-hmm. and then you throw it off the back foot, and then you get, you know, you get mushed, and then you go back and you whip your head. He hit it off the turf. He looked a little dizzy, and he never came back in that game. And uh, Tua definitely looked like he was concussed. I highly doubt that was his back. Who am I to say? I don't know. I'm not examining him, but uh, I've never heard of a back injury doing that to you. So I can get that. He could have went down and like, Oh, my back. You know what I mean? Like that, Yeah. but he's not going to like get dizzy and then like hold his head like that. Well, that would makes no sense. You visibly slam your head. You stumble over twice and you never once reach for your back. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I worry about him. Cause he's a, I mean, he's a light guy and it just seemed visually like man that you gotta sit i mean you can't stand up you know but hey and i think and i thought the rules are if you're if you have obvious signs of a concussion you have to sit out the whole game yeah that's why i think you know i don't know if this independent guy was in cahoots with the team but they're like listen this is a big freaking game if he's good get him back in oh yeah we'll call it a back injury right well, hey, credit where credit's due. I mean, he, if he was concussed, he went out and got it done, and that makes it even more impressive in his favor, I guess. But Yeah, and that Waddle play. Uh, oh, God. Ja- it was the game, man. Jaquan, Jaquan Johnson bit on that corner. Oh, they got smoked. He, they got he did smoked. A, he did one of those, what do you call it, a post flag or whatever, went for the corner, and then went back up the post. He got his hips turned. He was wide open. Honestly, if anyone threw a better ball, he would have waltzed into the end zone untouched. So uh, they got burned there. That was and what's crazy yeah. is that was a that one throw was a quarter of his yards all day. They hadn't allowed any big explosive play all day. And when it boils down, if Hyde and Poyer or maybe even Poyer were in there, it doesn't happen. But I don't think Tua makes that throw even a season ago. He did, and that was the game. Yeah. I got to just tip my cap. They took third and twenty-two. Thigh doc. I don't care who's in there. They got it done. You- that's what sucks. Did they like run a defense because they're worried they would pick up half the yards and be able to kick a field goal? <laughs> Why wouldn't you play quarters, not cover two? Because you're leaving the the middle of the field open. You want to know and the first thing I thought it. of? You want to know the first thing I thought of? Thirteen seconds. Yeah. They they rushed three. They were getting pressure on two of that whole drive. That was the reason they had gotten back into third and twenty two. They brought three, and I'm thinking to myself right when the snap gets let off, I go. The last thing you want to do on a deep ball here is give them the opportunity to expose the weakest part of your defense currently. And by the time, you know, he got settled in, it was too late. I don't know why. If it were up to me, man, and look, I'm not a coach. What the hell do I know? But I also watch Leslie Frazier piss away the AFC divisional game with two very similar schemes. I don't understand on that play why you don't send the house and then bring the back up to allow to not allow anything deep because that is what would be exposed if they had the opportunity, the defense just yeah. wasn't built for that type of play yesterday. I think this is just the fear of the quick hitter because the receivers are so fast. So they're worried, Hey, it's third and 22. We send the house. He gets them on a quick, you know, a hot route slant and he takes it 30 yards. But Should've honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. know. Should have, could have, would have. Well, Hey, you got anything you, else before we close out? Yeah. If you're, if you're rushing three, there should be an extra DB out there. So put him in the middle of the field too. 
you know, play what, a high cover three. Uh, we, need to get, we need to get you on the resident medical slash assistant coaching staff. I'll take over and, and hey, this none of this will happen again. You know what I mean? That's right. All yeah. Right. Uh, besides that, uh, Doyle ACL, he should be good by uh, towards the end of camp next year. Okay. That was a bummer right. to hear too. I like Tommy. Yeah. That's it sucks ACL for the depth. Yeah, it sucks. All right. Well, hey, I could have kept down here all night with that list, but you did give some good news, so that's good. And uh, thanks as always. Smarter as always, am I now, because of the thigh, Doc. He came on. There he is, and there he goes. Look at that thigh. Oh, boy. Someone in the chat said they had bigger thighs than me. Yeah, I saw that. I was wondering if you did, too, because that is a bold statement. Pretty insulting. Why don't you post a pic? All right. Hey, let's get him next week. Let's get him next week. Go Bills, baby. Appreciate you. No problem. Not myself. There I am. The Thigh Doc making us smarter as always. Also making us feel real stupid because of the things we don't know. The Thigh Doc. And man, oh man, has he been busy. Good God. But hey, hey I will say, I will say, he's he did deliver some good news. I think if there's a, there's a few guys there on that list that would have made a world of difference yesterday if they were in that he is saying could potentially return this week. And that's Mitch Morris. That's Ed Oliver, potentially Jordan Poyer. I think if those three guys are in yesterday, we're talking about a, a different game. I'm not saying it ultimately resi- results in a you know victory or loss or whatever, but I'm, I'm telling you right now, especially in, with Mitch Morris in yesterday, that game's different. 